Thanks for being with us. So let me ask you, first of all, we mentioned there how uh, uh, the, the, the tense relations uh, between the two uh, economic powers recently. Do you think this, uh, what's been announced here, will go some way towards addressing that? Hazem, it's uh, a very small steps, but that's what is necessary when you have the major trust deficit that has kind of grown since 2018 and the uh, pandemic. So, you know, these are working groups. These are attempts at getting things done. Um, this is the first time that a high-level U.S. Um, official has shown up in Washington with anything close to a, you know, some sort of small um, gesture that was taking 27 uh, uh, Chinese companies off this blacklist. Uh, let's hope that um, China is able to reciprocate and they can do something to end or begin um, and end the trade, the tensions and begin uh, rebuilding. If we look at China's economy uh, for a moment, um, it's it's been in something of a slump, as has much of the world uh, over over the last few months. But China China's economy, in particular, has struggled, and a lot of economists are saying that that's down to poor decisions by the Chinese government, too much centralized control, hostility towards uh, private sector, and and uh, and so on. What 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 do you say to that, and and how does that figure into the uh, relations with the U.S.? Well, I, first off, I, I think it's uh, a little bit of uh, disinformation. Uh, China's economy is still expected by everyone to grow uh, around 5%. Uh, if the U.S. was growing by 5% right now, the, the world would be turning cartwheels. Um, you know, Europe is going to be in mostly negative numbers, especially those trading houses. So, I mean, you, you have to take this with a grain of salt. If you go back one month ago, the narrative was that an, a China uh, economically was overpowering uh, everybody. Uh, now, all of a sudden, um, China's, uh, according to Biden, a ticking time bomb. I think you should take it with a grain of salt. In terms of problems, China does have them. Uh, there are certainly uh, local levels of debt, unemployment among uh, young people. Uh, but this is, yes, always partly their own fault uh, as they try to figure out how to do this. But it's also a large degree of the kind of uncertainty that's being pushed by the United States through these trade embargoes, sanctions, and creating uncertainty among businesses, especially businesses dealing with China, saying that uh, American investors can invest in ch Chinese technology and that chips uh, ca uh, can't be sold to China and chip making equipment can't be sold by other countries to China. It is the U.S. who's, who's pushing this, um, this very, very negative narrative and then complaining about the results. You're saying it's a negative narrative, but they're saying this is this they have legitimate security reasons uh, for doing this. But they also want to to maintain a, um, a level of healthy competition uh, with with China. How do you respond to that? Well, what does healthy competition mean? Uh, from the U.S. narrative, it means that uh, we're going to uh, cooperate with you where it's in our interests, and we're going to not cooperate with you when it's not in our interests. That's not competition. If you look at what the U.S. is doing in terms of these uh, unilateral uh, tariffs, embargoes, blacklisting, they're all against the WTO. Yet, you can't go to the WTO. Why? Because the United States will not allow appellate judges to be seated. They have not allowed this since the Obama administration. Therefore, there can be no final, final decision by WTO, and it's now toothless. So this idea that the U.S. is upholding international standards, I think, is incorrect, and that's proven by the facts. But uh, I think both sides of China is trying hard to figure out how they can reduce tensions. Right now, it's about their economy and the global economy, and they're in, in, interdependent this idea that they're somehow, uh, you know, it's U.S. versus China is nonsense. A global supply chain extends to every person on this earth, practically. And it's time that we wake up and remember that. Good to get your thoughts on this, uh, Aino Tangan. Thanks very much for being with us.